If you live near the Everglades, chances are you've taken visiting relatives or friends on an airboat ride along the river of grass. But no matter where you live in Florida, you probably know that for the past century, the precarious balance between man and nature has significantly altered the landscape and flow of the Everglades. New Florida's Maureen Freeze shows us how a group of scientists at Everglades National Park are working to protect a system on which many Floridians depend. The Everglades is uh, an immense and beautiful wetland system. It's not just a U.S. treasure or a Florida treasure, it's a world treasure. The Florida Everglades is a relatively young system, less than 5,000 years old. At one time, water would continuously flow from Lake Okeechobee down to the Gulf of Mexico for three to eight months each year. But the water doesn't move in the system the way it used to. It is now held in large water conservation areas. Effectively, the river of grass has become a pond of grass. Dr. Daniel Childers is an associate professor of biological sciences at Florida International University and a wetlands expert. The Florida Everglades, his laboratory. What we see now from, the, from an airplane or from a satellite is about half of what was here 100 years ago. Um, the other half is obviously now developed Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, um, and uh, agricultural fields just south of Lake Okeechobee. We have spent the last 100 years building 2,500 kilometers of canals, putting in levees, and building hundreds of water control structures to dramatically modify the way water behaves in the Everglades. There are 39 sawgrass plants in this first plot. I'm going to randomly select 15 of them. The Everglades is more than a unique ecosystem. It is the source of fresh water for the 6 million people living in South Florida. It feeds the Biscayne Aquifer, an underground system of shallow wells that South Florida relies on for its fresh water supply. For the past four years, Childers has led the Florida Coastal Everglades Long-Term Ecological Research Program at FIU. It is underwritten by several state and federal entities, including the National Science Foundation, Everglades National Park, the EPA, and the South Florida Water Management District. The purpose of the project is to collect and monitor the data that this ecosystem reveals about itself. The program is focused entirely in Everglades National Park, um, which is sort of the crown jewel of what's left of the Everglades. Um, and our primary focus here is on looking at the way the freshwater Everglades interacts with the downstream estuaries, and in particular the Gulf of Mexico. Inside the rain level gauge is a, uh, a tip bucket that pivots and its accuracy is 0 0.01 inches, so that uh, records the precipitation that's happening. The information Childers and his team have collected over the past four years could play a critical role in the 20-year, $8 billion Everglades restoration project set to begin within the next couple of years. This undertaking has two main goals. First, provide a sufficient freshwater supply to an ever-growing population and restore the natural flow of the Everglades. Just as important to getting the water right is making sure that the water is clean. It is critical to the human population that the Everglades is ecologically healthy and recharging the Biscayne Aquifer with clean water in a sustainable way. South Florida continues to develop at a staggering rate. It is estimated that by the year 2050, there will be 15 million people all vying for clean, fresh water. The Everglades as we see it now and hopefully in its restored form will be able to provide a certain amount of fresh water to, that, to the human population.